today is gonna be a day. We sit here collectively ready to dive into the horrifically heartbreaking animal abuse case that has been dubbed the House of Horrors for good reason. In September of 2023, on the inside of a 900 square foot house in Chandler, Arizona, over 60 special needs dogs were found neglected, abused, and tortured. As a result of this evil, countless have died. Some of the women behind exposing the situation and inevitably leading police to the arrest of April McLaughlin are sitting here today. The trauma bond is real, and for some of us, it's the first time we are actually meeting in person. The plan is to put this side of the story out there because it deserves to be told. First, introductions. Then we get into it. Chandler 55. Kimberly Elliott, Be Like Josh Foundation. Jenny Amuchastegui, Be Like Josh Foundation. Rebecca Chavez with Yaki Animal Rescue. I'm Shira Scott Ashdraff with the Animal Rescue Mission. Ellen Balandante, Deity Animal Rescue. Lindsay Bird, Deity Animal Rescue. <laughs> Our little nervous laughs. Where to begin? I think we go back to 2019, where for us as rescue organizations is when we first got involved with April, although she's many people. Many people and um, allegedly been doing this much longer than 2019. Yeah. yeah. So it's just when she was kind of found out, I guess. Yeah. Well, first, if I may, um, your intro was perfect, but I think we should point out it's not just us. There is. Right. Mm -hmm. Am I going to be the first to cry? <laughs> <laughs> like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a long I should have done the lashes. Because <laughs> I'm thinking Here about that. So, oh, perfect. Okay. So, we took, um, Becca and Jenny and I spoke about this last night. We are not clear at this moment which of these amazing women wants to be wants their name revealed so out of respect and the chaos out of respect and the chaos because we're not exactly sure how everyone feels today we will not say their actual names we will use we will provide aliases on their behalf today um, there are two women in particular um, who have remained anonymous and behind the scenes and there is one um, let's call her D. And there's another one, let's call her M. And they have been extremely instrumental in ways that are so hard to describe because they did digging and due so diligence. Much, yeah. so, so much, much discovery, content, tangible content. Mm -hmm. Since the beginning. Yes. That, since 2019. Yep. Since, uh, that dated back, yeah, to 2018 and 2019. And when all of that content was merged with Becca's, when she stepped forward in 2023, was as much powerful synergy as some of us who have large social media platforms and loud voices. How this came together to s how we solved this intricate, complex web that April wove, we undid in our own way, bringing all of our individual strengths and talents to the table. The larger platforms <laughs> like myself and Shira, uh, you know, we, we are in front of the camera more because we have a big reach, but what's going on behind the camera was equally, if not more important. And I, and that was a lot of also the stress behind the scenes. So I just want to say that we are not representing everyone. There's, we are representing everyone today, but there's so many more people, <clears throat> some that wanted to be here, but couldn't, um, some that were afraid to be here, didn't feel comfortable and, and they're just as important. Yeah. And I, I think to, to interject what Kimberly's saying is when all of this came about, and I, and I know we're going to go ahead and talk about your and Jenny's um, first initial encounters with April, but this that happened this time, there was a very large team. Yeah. 
that fair. And yes. it, it parlayed from the 2019 Correct. team. And yep. I'm going to say it was a good 15 women that if I count um, everyone that was in our chats yes. and who did all of this work, it was a good, it was a pretty d- big number. And I know that, you know, most of us here were the ones that were really in front of the camera a lot more mm-hmm. so. But I don't think people really understood there, it, just how much work went behind what was seen. Yeah. Like on, researchers. Research, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. researchers and putting, you know, you've seen the meme of um, like the chalkboard with that's basically what it well, was. Well, that's exactly what was happening <laughs> in uh, modern day times, right. really. And right. thank you for saying that. Mm-hmm. There, it, there was such a family behind the scenes and literally we kind of kept each other going. Um, and there it were was, fights within the family. I mean, it was we, stressful. And not. And I don't say that to 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 show drama. I say that to show it wasn't easy. No. We had to be there for each other, but we're but we're also all of our trust was broken. Some of us don't know each other at all. It's just a name on a screen, and we're trusting one another and we're relying on one another. And it, it was scary, and it was really intense. It was really yeah. Intense. I, that was the thing. Like at the beginning, when you know we had all these chains going on, and there's so many new people, it, you didn't know still who you could trust. I know for me, I was constantly like I would call you and I'd be like can I you know um but then once like we really got going it was like all right I'm trusting these ladies 100% wholeheartedly and it was amazing like the amount of teamwork like there were so many amazing women working on this mm-hmm. and a couple men and and yes there were a couple <laughs> men yes yes, yes. There, were a couple. yes. There, were, there I think there were we two did boys have a couple men yes. yeah but, yeah I but mean, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say the trauma bond is real. Mm -hmm. And whether we're sitting on this couch or Mm -hmm. we're figuratively sitting on this couch, it was, you know, back then and more recently, just, you know, a family who made this happen, Mm -hmm. really. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I just want to add that these two dogs are both survivors of. Yes. The Chandler. Yes. Oh my gosh, we didn't even talk we about our other guests. Yes. How the dogs? <laughs> so do you guys I know want that's to why introduce he's... your dogs. Yeah. This is Chester. He's our our. He was kind of the one that you know yelled out for attention and and he's, he's definitely a mascot water. like yeah. i would say he's up there with butters as like yeah and also in a lot of the the content was that was captured that went yes. viral chester um the footage of him was super impactful absolutely yeah for me i could definitely say it was the video of chester where i think it was the night that bryce got arrested this 15 year old kid amazing try to hop the fence because Chester was like screaming for help and I saw that video and that's the night I was like that's when it really really clicked for me I you know we'll get into me later but that's when I hopped on a plane but it was Chester screaming for help and yeah I really think that he and where did he come from tell us his story oh should we get to well he's originally from Mexico he and Rudy um both were found in Mexico, terrible stories. Um, And while they were at the vet there, they bonded and they just like developed this amazing bond at the Mexico vet. And what's crazy about them, and I I know we'll talk about this later, is they, they have so many families because in Mexico, like they were so beloved by, when this happened, we found so many people I didn't even know about because they were there for a year and then, hi baby. You know, and then when I went and rescued them with my team, we brought them to LA and then they stayed at Two Hands War Paws, which is the rehab facility that I work with. And they were there for over a year, I think. Um, so, you know, everyone there left them. Like they just had so many people behind them. Behind and- them, mm-hmm. yeah. And then April yeah. adopted them. And then we found them a dream home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll get into that later. Yeah. But Can you tell Chester. us about Chester's special needs? Because right now you can't tell that he has special needs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chester is, um, is can't use his, well, I, he can't use his back legs, but sometimes he can a little bit. Um, and that's because he was shot. shot. Right. Chester was, shoot, I'm getting him and, and Rudy mixed yeah. up. Chester he was, was shot, shot, yes. Shot Chester stabbed. was shot and stabbed um, in Mexico. 
and a baby. And, um, but he's such a trooper. Like, he sometimes, Catherine will, Catherine is new mom. Mm, yeah, that's his mom. Um, will take videos where he's just standing up, like eating, drinking water. And, you know, he sometimes he has. He was standing up earlier. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's. And that's, imp- if I can, it's so important to note that even though he has this diagnosis and this injury, he was, he had a great body score. He was clean. He was able to stand because of all the investment that your organization made in his physical therapy. He was then adopted by April. And when he was saved from April, he could no longer stand. He lost those abilities that he regained. Mm-hmm. That That is the, that's the thing personally that really got me about this whole thing is she took away their dignity. It's not that, it's not just that they declined in her care. She undid the tireless, expensive, mm-hmm. grueling, and necessary work that rescuers like Shira and Becca and myself have done for these dogs. And then we turn them over to someone that we think appreciates that effort mm-hmm. and is going to carry the torch. Instead, she stripped them of everything they earned. It's like she took off their badge of honor and their medals right. and kept them like tokens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And so to see him standing today, was like it was so beautiful because he got that back and now he you know that's no longer that's no longer part of his story yeah right. yeah but rudy and jester for a year every day swim therapy acupuncture just so much love and so much care went into them and and yeah they just they got into like the best shape possible it's humanly like, it's, possible for it's a almost like you know like training an athlete is what yeah. it feels like you know because yeah. we, we do that too and you know we're so proud of of this this athlete that we've created so healthy and and then to see that deteriorate is really difficult yeah well this is squiggy he's perfect and um <laughs> that's that on that no <laughs> uh yeah so this this is squiggy also um one of the survivors one of the 13 so out of the 55 or over 60 dogs. Um, there were 13 that April had uh, petitioned for and really fought for. They are her 13 family dogs. So in her mind, she has a rescue and then she has her family dogs. And um, I wish he could talk because I'd love to ask him what his care was like. Um, because I mean, there's obviously things that are off about him, but but also as a rescuer, he's probably one of the most easy, well-balanced dogs I've ever met, which is totally bizarre. So he was one of the last dogs to be released from custody. So he did his time living in April's home. Then he did over three months at the Humane Society shelter. Um, and then, you know, I picked him up on behalf of Shira's rescue because she was out of town and immediately we bonded. And then 48 hours later, he blew out his knee. So then... <laughs> So I, the Belay Josh Foundation has replaced his knee. I felt bad it happened on my watch, but it was actually, we learned a pre-existing, you know, condition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let the record state. And he's just, you know, he's been such a joy. So he's happy to be here and um, snuggle everyone and all those great things. Yes. <laughs> So I think it's important, like, let's set some foundations, like some background here. Yeah. So we, Kimberly and I, we met in 2019. Yes. And that was because you guys reached out to us. We had a dog uh, that we had taken in from Mexico who, like you said, he had come to us perfectly trained, to- totally potty trained. He had been born um, with out his two front legs. They were kind of like, no, I don't shoulder know. Blades. They were short, short uh, yeah. like little nubby mm-hmm. shoulder blades. Yeah. And he was a shepherd mix, so he was a bigger dog. One of our followers reached out and she said, he's here and we can't really help him here. He needs wheels. He needs a a good family. Can you take him? And at the time, we were just starting out and I was like, yeah. And she, she sent him to us and he lived in my home with my dogs and um and slept in my bed and was my dog and i had actually figured that i was never going to find the perfect home for him hard to find placement yeah Yeah. and that he was going to live with me forever which was fine you know i i felt like he fits right in with the family he was sweetheart and then i get this application 
from April Addison and she checked all the boxes. Everything was right. She worked from home. And that's the name she gave you, April, April Addison. April Addison. That's the name we had too, okay. originally. Okay. okay. She was April Addison. Deity at the time, you know, our standard protocol, we had probably a four page application. We did FaceTime home checks because she was in Arizona. Arizona. Mm -hmm. And the application was beautiful. The FaceTime home check was beautiful. We she later. Did it from a really nice house. That she. A very, a very uh, big, beautiful house. Right. Mm -hmm. That we later found out, I think, was an Airbnb that she used. Okay. We had we had guessed that maybe it was guessed that maybe it had belonged to an affluent friend, but now uh, we're thinking that's what we were thinking back then. Okay, yeah, I don't know why because I feel like she used the same house with somebody else. I'm not sure yeah, do you who. Remember her friend, the model, yes, the blonde Barbie or something. There was yes. the Instagram page. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, we thought that perhaps she was because she w that's how she portrayed herself a woman of of luxury you know and, yeah. and that whole thing and they were seemed to be friends at the time yeah. yeah so on my end i was like is this really happening is this dream coming true yeah. and i even had to play it in my head because i had you know he was already a part of my family i'm like am i gonna let him go mm -hmm. and then i thought to myself if you keep him you're being selfish because I already had, I had a young child at the time. I had other dogs. And here's this perfect application. Mm -hmm. And she told me that the reason she was so drawn to him because he was special needs and she had been bullied when she was in school. It's the same it's the, story. Yeah, same she story. Story. So, she, so <laughs> she understood him and yeah. wanted to give him the best life. So... I was like, okay, I made the decision. She drove from Arizona to my house here in Los Angeles she to pick him up. Wow, and she brought one of her other dogs. Which one? Um, Three, a tripod? Yes. Jesse. Jesse. I met Jesse. And he's a little reactive with other dogs, but I don't know how he was. Rex he was just so submissive. Like, he was so back of the pack, like, just he's sweet. so vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. He's just a... He got along with everyone. Um, she sat at my kitchen table. She met my kids. She met my my dog. She said all the right things. Um, and at the end of the day, she said, I love him. I want to take him. And Dream come true. Like yeah. That. I mean, you know, she was like talking to me like, oh, yeah, I was married once and that didn't work out ended really badly but like my dream was always to have kids but I don't think I'm gonna have kids so these dogs are my kids and I was like I felt like okay you hit the lottery here he's gonna be great and that's also something that I want to bring up is that we've noticed through talking with each other that April had a really good way of finding out how to connect with each of us and she transformed her life or the story of her life to make sure that we felt very safe. Absolutely. With she curated Pat. a narrative oh, yeah. for each of us, but she didn't connect real deep. No. Did you notice she kept very, yeah. surface. Super, very she superficial? Gave, she gave you just enough mm -hmm. for right. you to go, okay, she's kind of my person. Oh, but she has boundaries and walls up. I'll respect that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, she oh. gave a reason for the boundaries yeah. and the walls, and yeah. she studied her victims, each and every one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. She created methodically. Insight. Well, she Instagram studies our social media each. pages. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That's so, very important. Yeah. To yeah. Note because she she used that con on both ends of the spectrum. She would stalk and study and emulate our Instagram pages to curate a narrative that we could connect with and identify mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And then she would use that in a con with other rescues, like. You know, it, it, it's really brilliant, actually. Yeah. She's she, brilliant. She's really, really smart. Even now I'm thinking about how she, I see, think she did this with all of us. She kind of put us on a pedestal and, you know, like kind of praised yeah. us and was so kind of, um, you know, humble about it. Like she was really, like disgustingly, creepily mm. smart. She's and, a mastermind. Yeah. yeah. I used to yeah. text her for updates and she would send pictures and she would say sweet things like, 
I love following your mission. I love what you're doing. I'm so I'm so impressed. Thank you. Like really? mm -hmm. so Rex went to live with April. Right. And then a few months later, you guys reached out. Yeah. That was how you and I met. This is a good time to talk to Kimberly about your <laughs> first interaction. So what made April. you then reach out? Like Jenny might have to fill in the gaps for me because my brain, um, you understand. Yeah, it trauma. gets spotty. It's embarrassing, really, because I, I have so many opportunities. I'll say, gosh, I, I knew April in real life, and then I can only recall these couple instances. But my mind knows we had so many more interactions, but there's just – literally black holes yeah. in my memory. And then Jenny will fill it in for me and I'm, I'm blown away every time. So maybe, That's well, I know that April, April and I met because she had adopted a dog that I networked on my social media page, Clyde. And I had originally met with Clyde's original rescue, Sarah. And I, you know, Sarah and I connected because we both had a Sarah Beller hypoplasia puppy. I had Josh. She had Clyde. She was looking for a forever home. I networked him on my page. And then my personal life demanded a lot of my attention. And I kind of checked out for a while. And when I came back to social media, um, someone named April Addison had reached out and said, hey, I adopted that puppy named Clyde. I live, I, I don't know if she said Chandler was living near Chandler at the time. I was living in Chandler. And she said, hey, I live in Chandler. Maybe we can get together for a play date for Josh and Clyde. And I'm like, well, that'd be great. Because at that time, I had never met a dog like Josh. My whole world revolved around Josh and how magical he was and, and overcoming uh, his disability, you know. And that's what I connected with April with. Um, and like a sitting duck. I mean, I w had recently gone through a major loss. I was grieving. I was very vulnerable. I was off my game. I was not keen. I could not read a room like I normally do. And it was like, oh, this is Clyde and he's awesome and inclusion, compassion. She's like, I was bullied. And I was like, oh my God, I, w I was severely bullied in junior high. You know, I grew up with a really traumatic childhood. I struggle with feeling good about myself. And she, you know, we, we connected on this, but very surface, mm -hmm. just enough to let me know, I see you. Mm -hmm. And my wall came down and it became about the dogs. And I mean, that that was it. You know, she was just another pet parent. Um, I could tell we didn't share a ton of commonality. So really, it, everything centered the dogs. And we started doing a few of these meetups where we invited Chad, uh, Nodder's dad. And, we, and it kind of became this group. And then there was this other couple, Barb and Ken, who had another dog they had fundraised for out in Illinois. And they'd come out. We started kind of doing these, like, special needs pet parents meetups. You know, and I don't have children, so I've never been part of like, you know, parent groups, but that's what it reminded me of. So we didn't go deep. The commonality was dogs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a, a rescue background. I had been in rest, worked in rescue prior, prior to adopting Josh. But at, when I had Josh, I was just in my career. I wasn't doing rescue. I was just Josh's foster and then Josh's mom. And that's how I met Jenny, too. She was a pet parent to one of Josh's siblings, came from the same breeder, same disability. So we met and we kind of made this little group and we did little outings together. And that's how we met April. And April got comfortable with us and she had reached out to me at one night and said, hey, Basically, I have a neighbor who's kind of giving me a hard time because she thinks I have too many dogs and she's ratted me out to my landlord. And of course, I could totally connect with that because I had six dogs, which at the time was like oh, unheard of. And I think I think April had said she had six dogs or around there. And she's like, hey, I need temporary placement like fosters for some of my dogs. So like we do when we network, what do you say? Well, send me photos and information. Are they good with other dogs? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Send them to me and I'll network. And in a couple of those photos was a dog named Rex. And I remember he stood out to me because I remember I had texted to her. I said, oh, my God, I've no I didn't know you had these other dogs. And she's like, yeah, I don't really tell people. And again, I could that was not a red flag for me because mm -hmm. I come from a rescue background. That's hand over Rover. That's Sarah and Coco. Should I answer? Yeah. OK. Hi. Hi. 
She's got a black <laughs> sweatshirt covered in dog hair. That's what I said. That's like the dog rescuer outfit. <laughs> okay, yeah. you're on the phone. So we're just giving some background so you can just be here and be part of it. Um, yeah, so she had asked me if I could help her network these dogs, and one of them was Rex. And I had said to her, you know, oh, I don't remember you mentioning Rex, you know. And she said, oh, well, I don't tell everyone about all my dogs or something to that effect. And so I began networking Rex, but he stood out in my mind because I was like, oh, tell me about him. And she basically had all great things to say about him. Anyways, I was not successful in finding her help, but I never heard about it again. That's what I remembered from us talking last night. I never heard about it again. She never hit me up. You know, usually they'll hit you up in a couple of days. Oh my God, I'm getting desperate. Have you found anyone? Have you found anyone? I just never heard about it again. Wait, can I ask a question? Just because yeah. if I'm confused, other people might be. So she, was she asking you to network because she wanted to find homes for these dogs? She wanted like temporary placement to, to kind of get the dogs, hide them, get them out of her house, get the get the landlord heat off of her back. Like just, sorry, okay. I should have clarified. So temporary. Yeah. Like, like temporary, like can you help me hide some of okay. these dogs? Which, and okay. we later found out, we believe this was the location where she was keeping dogs with duct tape around their mouth, ah, hidden in the shared this laundry This was in room. Scottsdale. Yes. Right. Yes. And then she moved from Scottsdale to Chandler. Okay. So she definitely was hiding dogs. And we do believe, I think in old conversations, this is where I'm fuzzy. I think we talked about and we had speculated that he was one of the dogs. Because she had mentioned to me he barks a lot. He barks a lot. And um, see, this is where like the holes are. It's so bizarre. Like when you're like, oh, it happened before that. I don't even recall. But anyways, so we had this meetup in the park and I had asked April. I said you know, whatever happened to Rex, like whatever came of that. But Rex was the dog that stood out for me because the other ones she needed help with, I think was like, I know she had Cody, Xander, Jesse, Clyde. I don't know if Nico was in the picture yet. She had Nico. She had Nico. Mm -hmm. So Rex would have been six. And I think there was others. But um, Rex was the one that stood out to me. I already knew Clyde. And Nico had straight leg syndrome. But there's something about Rex, you know, the way he was like a kangaroo. Mm -hmm. And he was so cute. And I thought, why is she not putting him on her page? She was calling him Rexy Roo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, why was she not showcasing him on her page? Mm -hmm. So when she met me, I remember one of the first things she asked me. She was like, so how did Josh get so many followers? And I was like, oh, it's the wildest thing, you know. Uh, Because it is kind of wild when it happens to you. When something goes viral, you're just like oh, this is, you know, wow, this is what it's like. It's really bizarre. And I was like, oh, well, the Dodo interviewed us and did a story on Josh. And then all of a sudden, and then it wasn't long after, all of a sudden, Dodo did a story on Clyde. Mm -hmm. And then she started blowing up with followers and stuff. And I'm like, oh, yep, that's how it goes. Clyde's adorable. That makes, that tracks for me. But that was sort of how I knew April as this, she, she had, then she began to develop this sort of like competing vibe, which I never really understood. Um, you know, because going viral on social media requires zero skill, <laughs> at least at that time, right? That was when it was still a little bit more organic. Um, and that's that's how we that's how we came to know each other. It really was the Clyde um, Josh connection, yeah. and with, we were just pet parents. You know, I didn't have Be Like Josh Foundation then. And you were asking whatever came of that. Did you find temporary placement yeah. for Rex? And what did she say to that? How did you end up calling Alan and yeah. I? She said, she straight looked at her and she said, he died. And she just shut it down quick and she wanted to change the subject. And we were all at that park and Kimberly was like, oh, oh okay. Like, it was a very strange, fast thing. But I, I remember this happening and I was like, I don't know who this dog is. I just met this woman. This is the first time ever meeting April. She was talking to her. Everybody seemed okay. So I was like, okay, everything's fine, you know. And then later... It all kind of came out and you re you you actually reached out to me and you said, I'm, I'm a little worried about this situation because then also Barb had been talking to us. And See, saying, and I don't remember this stuff, but it, around and people this started kind of coming with more information mm -hmm. and things were not adding up right. and things were not feeling good because at first we would hear things and we're like no she's just like the rest of us right. just but that's because she laid the groundwork yeah she came to because she, she just that's yeah it's her plan she had said oh other rescuers are bullying her on social media mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. was the 
the German Shepherd, German girls. Shepherd rescue because she had Elsa and Astrid were two yes. German Shepherds that were sent to her that declined in her care. And that's a whole other story. That's a whole right. other rabbit but hole. But that was another red flag. Right. Big and, time. And then that's when her mugshot came out. Andrew and I started getting DMs from people that were like, we're concerned about April Addison. Don't endorse her. Because I was sharing her on my page. I'm like, this woman adopted Clyde. You know, we're friends. Mm -hmm. You know, look at what she's doing. Go follow her page. Go follow Clyde. And I still harbor a lot of guilt about that because for whatever reason, when you have a large Instagram platform, if you endorse something, then people take it as gold. You know, it's a double-edged sword. I didn't know any better. I didn't I didn't know how to vet people. I was just like, well, it looks great to me. So this is what I think okay, of it. Side note, yeah. I don't think anyone could have been vetted more than someone who's adopted from one of our rescues. This That's woman true. was not not vetted. Right. Yeah. We just were bamboozled. Con. Yeah. She's, She's a con woman. Right. So um, then her mugshot came out. And I don't even know what the mugshot was pertaining to, but it was a previous life. And I texted her about it. It was when she stole from her employer. Okay. Yeah. She had a, she, you know, she got arrested. Obviously, there was a mugshot of her. And I, was it tied to the name April Addison, I believe? It was. It was tied to the name April Addison. And someone had sent me the mugshot and I confronted her. And I said, hey, this is floating around. People are talking, you know. What's up? And I don't, I, I'd be lying if I tried to even quote what she said. I don't recall. I just know what my response was, which is, hey, some of us have a checkered past. And I told her some things about my past. And I'm like, it's nobody's business. That's how women in rescue are. They want to find one little thread and pull it and ruin your integrity. We definitely know that happens because mm -hmm. it happened to me again in 2023. Mm -hmm. But I digress. And, you know, and so again, a common denominator. And but then we had the mugshot. And that is something tangible, right? That was something. And it was hard to completely let that but go. But again, she had excuses. She always had perfect excuses. Yeah. Believable, perfect excuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So when I reached out to you, and I don't know how we got from there, because there was a lot of little side conversations, but when I reached out to you, the ball had all already been rolling. A bunch of us had gotten together, and it was kind of like, hey, Something's up with, with this chick, April. We didn't know what it was. She didn't have a rescue at the time. She was just starting to dabble with, what was the first one, Special Paws, mm -hmm. was the rescue that she founded when I founded the Be Like Josh Foundation. And so I think she was just in the precipice of that. And we were, we kind of got to talking. Jennifer, myself, Chad, then Chad looped in someone. And then she looped in someone and we started talking. And then the name, deity or rex or something came up but i remembered rex and they said that dog came from deity who knows deity and i didn't know you guys but i knew people who knew you guys and i set up a call yeah and i thought you know if i dm them i have a large enough account where they'll see it and they'll at least respond back that's one that's one privilege at least you know when you have a large platform is if you reach out people listen thankfully and we talked Mm -hmm. And then you guys jumped in. Yes, and I can remember where we were standing in in our in our office, and just the blood draining from my face. Reading your DM and talking to you on the phone, and at the time, he wasn't dead. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. He she said he was dead, but he was not dead, and that is when the first Instagram page went up. The, the truth page. No, I made one before that. Oh. I forgot it was okay. Yeah, and nobody knew that it was me. And she Are you had tell it. Are you I don't care. Yeah, I'll tell it. <laughs> so, so she, Jenny actually made the first truth page because I think it was Andrew that was Andrew, it. Kimberly, and I were talking about it, and nothing made sense. And so we decided we were going to go after her on social media and bring more attention to it. And that's how everyone else came into the picture are, do, are we allowed to know what that page was called i don't even remember now oh <gasps> i on because instagram it took it down. down she got it taken down <gasps> oh, oh, wow. she came after me she ca totally yeah. came after me quick so wow. the uh. first post was photos of rex and it just it was us straight calling her out saying where is rex april where is rex what's happened to him what did you do with him and i made multiple posts multiple times a day and i just hammered at her and i started right. following all of her followers so that they would see the page 
and go to it. Oh, wow. Jenny we never saw that. Yeah. Nobody, nobody saw we never heard this. But wow. nobody knew <laughs> that it was me. And I had people messaging me who were in that original 2019 group saying, who are you? And I said, for my safety, I cannot tell you. Because she had been to my house. Mm-hmm. At this time, she had been to my house. She had been inside my house. I had watched Clyde for her. She knew everything. Mm -hmm. And so nobody could know it was me. The only people that knew it was me was myself, Kimberly, and Andrew. And I knew they weren't going to say anything. So we had that, we had that page and I started following everybody I could so that they would see. And then I started following the people on Instagram that I knew were looking for fights with rescues and would go after people. And I started following them. And I started putting this page out there because we needed to like light a fire. We needed to do something. And that is when she started, I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna, I'm like, go ahead, do what you wanna do. You don't know who I am. I made up a fake email. Like I, there was no tracing me whatsoever on her level. Like she was smart, but not that smart. (laughs) <laughs> so we made that page and then she got it taken down and Instagram was like, you're in violation. I'm like, whatever. So that came down. By this time, though, people started talking. There was a Facebook chat that started. Chad was in there. Um, D was in there. Um, and that's when we started coming. And that's when we started learning more about Marley. Mm-hmm. That's right. And Hope Marley. and the rescue mission yeah. for both of those dogs that's then what went it was. into play. Those two dogs. And that's when we started to discover, because nobody could figure out where Rex was, but we knew he actually wasn't dead because people had seen him. There was proof he was still alive. But Her neighbor. Said, yeah. Because she had dumped him in her backyard. Yes. When the cops right. were coming to do welfare checks. Yes. That's right. It was Marley. See, this is what I mean. It's almost a little embarrassing. But I'm that's like, trauma response. Like, yeah. I mean, this is, it's, it's literally humiliating. I, I'm like, oh my God, how did I forget all about Marley? Marley and, and foster- Hope. And mm-hmm. Crystal was his foster. The rescue adopted to April. They came, they came to Arizona to get a, a civil standby from a police officer to get their dog back. The cops, the Chandler police said, we can't help you. There's nothing we can do. So literally... Crystal lured April to come meet up with her. And she said, could I just take Marley for a shopping spree to PetSmart and pushing him around like I did in the old days? And he was completely lateral recumbent. I think he was diagnosed with Neospora, mm-hmm. which is a very severe neurological disability. I mean, Crystal took amazing care of him, but that's a 24-7 caregiver role. And he had declined in April's care. He had, so, you know open wounds from laying in one spot too long and he had muscle atrophy he was in bad shape and crystal saw him she held her composure she said okay i'll meet up with you in a couple hours i'm gonna take him to pet smart that girl put that dog in her car and put the pedal to the metal and she did not stop or slow down until she crossed that new mexico border that's amazing she stole marley back she stole Marley. but she had to actually no she didn't what she didn't technically steal Oh. Because as soon as someone relinquishes, as soon as you say, hey, yeah, go ahead, take. April was. Can we cuss on you? Yes. Fuck yeah. She was fucked. <laughs> she was fucked. <laughs> because uh, I know that that was also some of the worry. I remember talking to Crystal and even to someone else that had also done the same thing in, in rescuing their dog back. They're like, oh, I don't want to Do talk you- about it. Yeah, maybe. It was, yeah, that was not that my whole, D. Another D. Yeah, mm-hmm. the uh, the other yeah. D. Um, and they had talked. They had talked about it, like, oh, you know, we don't want to. And I'm like, no. As soon as she hands the dog over, because that's what I was hoping that she would do, and we'll talk about that soon. But I, that's what I was hoping that we were going to be able to pull off when we went went mm-hmm. to Arizona. Mm-hmm. Was if she was like, yeah, go take butters, you know, and we we'll, we would have. Even if she yeah. just says like, oh, you could take him to shop, like yeah. that is considered. Yeah, she gave. Well, she gave- Legally, so, legally, legally yeah. she didn't steal, but I yeah. think we can all agree. I mean, <laughs> I mean, she, she had to resort to almost like a take it for the taking. Yeah, right. A thief's yeah. mindset to, to get her dog to safety yes. because the cops were like, we're not even going to look into this. They mm-hmm. said, we're not even going to look into this. But by that point, they have already they had already done. Um, we'd already called the cops. We'd already called we animal call. control. They did home no, checks. We, They'd been in no the house. house. Yeah, but that time, at that time, was her fine. house wasn't a mess. Yeah, because yeah, she didn't have 60 dogs. Yeah. And that's, we came in after all of this had already happened with yes. Marley and the Shepherds. And yeah. then. But I have a question. Yeah. When you had reached out to Ellen, huh. 
to voice your concern about Rex, what was the concern? Like, I knew what our concern was, that she was taking in too many dogs. Was that the same concern? No. No, at this point, what was going on was, wait a second. This is when we first realized, wait, maybe this blonde April Addison who owns Clyde and Nico, maybe she's not who she says she is. Okay. Because we're finding out about all these dogs. And the thing was, is April was big on social media. She was constantly on social media on Clyde's all page. day. So to not be showing a dog as okay. captivating as Rex was like, wait a second. Okay. And then she was also the one that adopted these German shepherds who declined. And then she was also the one that adopted Marley who declined. So at this point, what M and D mm-hmm. were doing is that's what started the discovery mindset, I think, okay. for them. And they're like, wait a second, there must be more dogs. And that's when we uncovered dogs like Abby, who had like a little cleft lip. Oh, yes. And she was way previous. We're like, we've never heard of this dog. And that was the first time, I think, that we started to realize, wait a second, this isn't like some of the dog. We talked about the three types of dog hoarders right. last night. Right. Why don't you just interject real mm-hmm. quick what each of those three types of hoarders are? So I was... Someone had reached out to me about another case in where I where I am from in South Texas, and it led me to do some research on hoarding laws in Texas. And I came across this um, article that talks about different kinds of hoarders. And you have the overwhelmed hoarder, which is a regular lay person who's just took on more than she could or he could handle, right? You're you rescued, and maybe they you just took on too many, right? So you have the typical overwhelmed hoarder that means well but kind of got in over their head then you have the rescuer hoarder right who has this belief that you know they're all safer with me i'm gonna rescue all of them no one can do it like i can and i thought oh well maybe that's april but then i got to the third one and the third one is called an exploitative hoarder where they do know right from wrong and they are using the animals for whatever personal gain um and they also are um indifferent to caring for the animal and providing the care that they need and they could see the animal you know struggling hurting sick and they don't care as long as it feeds whatever they need and so i was telling that to to Kimberly and Jenny last night and I was like, oh, I just came across this article and they talk about these different types of hoarders. And so, you know, when all of this started, the second we'll get into it, but when all of this started, you know, everyone was like, oh, she's mentally ill. She's, she's a hoarder. And I'm like, no, she's not the classic hoarder. Is she hoarding? Yes, she is, but not the way that we're... She was exploiting. She was exploiting them, Um, yes. And I think, so that's kind of the evolution, though. Like, what you just described, when we first were kind of digging, we thought, okay, we thought she was just a a well-intentioned pet parent. We think she might just be hoarder type one. But now, when I look at it, I think April views herself as hoarder type two. Mm -hmm. Because even in the courtroom, she would say things like, portrayed herself as like, these dogs are better off with me. Nobody else could handle them. She, I think she even accused you of that. Like, why did you even give butters to me? It's because she said that to someone mm-hmm. else. She's, it's because yeah. she couldn't care for them. I, they're better off with me. But in reality, she's hoarder type three. And so it's like, especially for people like us that are so present and observant, we were bamboozled. Mm-hmm. But we had to peel back all these layers. And we did so by the discovery of each dog. Each dog that we found tied to her told a story. Mm-hmm. It's like an arm, a branch growing off a tree. And I and that's what in 2023 came about is this enormous tree with these branches, some growing forever, some new little buds. But it's this enormous tree. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just completely overwhelming (laughs) yeah yeah just because i want to wrap up rex's story because i'm emotional even about thinking that finally this dog his story is going to be told and he get he's getting his voice here and when you reached out we then sent the cops over there to do a welfare check i remember that on rex And we had the body cam footage. Mm -hmm. Well, the confusing thing was we did not know if Rex was dead or alive. Right. Yeah. Because she says she's dead. We know he's alive. Someone's seen him. So at this point, we're just trying to figure out. Twice. Two people. She told told other people he was dead, too. But for different 
re- like he died for different reasons. Meanwhile, he's mm-hmm. in a crate in her house that he cannot even stand up in in diapers. And this was a dog, a shepherd, a small shepherd, like squiggy size, who could stand up and could move around and was totally potty trained. Mm-hmm. And she has reduced him to a fucking kennel in a diaper to live in his mm. and that's why he was barking right right so, so the, the police welfare check exposed like on his body cam that rex was in the house in a crate well this and this but this was the first body this was the first welfare check that one of you guys had done or there was a previous welfare check and welfare then we were brought in, called in yes and so well or rex was seen on that first welfare check done by somebody else and then we came when we found out we did another welfare check and that's when she came out of the house she would not let the cop anywhere near her house at this point took him to the side of her house and said oh no rex is dead i euthanized him and then gave like random reasons oh you know he only had two legs oh you know like he just wasn't doing well oh yeah he had valley fever Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he had bruises all over himself. Like, nothing made sense. And this cop was smart enough to get the name of the vet where she had this dog euthanized. And we were able to get people to get information for us and confirm. I have medical records. Yeah, ultimately got the records from the vet. That this dog was brought in for a wellness check. No diagnosis on the records, only that X amount of euthanasia euthanasia drug was pulled and he was euthanized. So basically, she euthanized a healthy dog. Well, we don't know if he was healthy. We don't know. Yeah. But like it didn't it didn't say he had valley fever. Like it didn't say anything was wrong. Justification to the Yeah. For the euthanasia. She used to justify failing health and euthanasia because the dog had a disability this is extremely important because she shamefully exploits differences in disabilities yeah did you guys ever talk to the vet i forget if any of the vets were ever we tried we did not personally talk to the vet but we had a mole in the hole in the uh, vet tech world Mm -hmm. who was able to get through and talk to another vet tech there and get some information. Well, we also hired. And, and then we, yeah, we hired a private detective who he also went to her house and, um, and I she. I think he questioned the vet. He tried to yeah, put pressure yeah. on the vet. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, yeah. And at this point, he was already, the dog was already dead, even though in my mind, because I was so f- fucked up over this, like in fetal position, I'm never rescuing again. Right. In my mind, he was still alive yeah. and we were still putting yes. out flyers. You, you truly believed he I, was alive? And that he was going to appear. And we were posting on social media. And where is just, Rex? Have you seen just Rex? Like, where's marbles? Exactly. Just like. We were doing like, the same. It looked the same with the red and the black and the yeah. where's Rex? Yeah. Post it. Share it everywhere. Just like where's marbles? And. In my dreams today, he's still somewhere and someone's going to reach out and be like, oh, wait, we have Rex. Mm-hmm. And this whole thing is going to be like a big, you know. Twisted game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think people, I, I really want people to understand the gravity of the position that that you are in and always will be when you think of this. And the same thing with Coco because yeah. of marbles. Mm-hmm. So when you are an animal rescuer, you are acting on behalf. I am acting on behalf of this animal. He cannot speak for himself. He cannot act for himself. And it is, it's an unspoken oath, an energetic oath, where he turns over his trust to me. And it, I have to depend on my intelligence, my gut, my gut intuition. I have to check all the boxes. I got to do the home check and the background check. I have to do all my due diligence. Mm-hmm. And then I hand this animal over with trust. That in and of itself is emotional and difficult. And that's when I'm getting updates. But when you are the person that has chosen to hand your dog to someone like April and April does the unspeakable, that is a trauma that some people will never heal from and rightfully so. I did not think I was coming back and I'm sure you feel the same way. I'm sure you felt the same way. Like she had to thank God. Oh, God. 
I mean, <laughs> picked my ass up and said, so what? Now, like all the other dogs that you would have saved in the future, right. like they're not going to get saved because you you can't get over this. Like, yeah. get up. Yeah. Well, to be fair, you're still not. I don't think any of us are over it. Like we're still having opportunities to adopt dogs out of state that comes. It puts us right back in that um, headspace. So I, even though we've learned and changed our process to help accommodate this there's still not a world in which you can avoid someone like april addison there's 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 still going to be out there there's tons of them always yeah where there is animals there is profit and where there is profit there is greed and there is crime it is what it is this Mm -hmm. is this is why rescuers right are so anti-breeder because it's like there there's there's money there Mm -hmm. you you are not in it for the right reasons if you're profiting Mm -hmm. right so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. difficult. But yeah, since this, I mean, I, I think we're all the same. Like, I don't trust anyone. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. everything is questioned now. Every, uh, you know, absolutely every foster, every adopter. I mean, I pretty much do everything except, like, body search them. But, like, mm-hmm. everything in life I question. I question that person. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how I'm going to start dating again because I'm going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, because she was so good Mm -hmm. that I still I'm like I cannot even believe that Sammy did this this Sammy yeah like what was what was the name she gave you Sammy wait what was it Sammy Sammy Taylor Taylor. Sammy Sammy Taylor Taylor. wow yep Sammy I mean Sammy and I spoke all the time we all loved Sammy Sammy was friends with all of us like I think you were probably the next one that developed the relationship right because after Rex so after so after Rex, how that came to be before I think she went a different route and started to get to know Shira is from that group of us, eight eight to ten of us maybe, it was like okay we're gonna take this to social media and I remember I did this like two hour live mm-hmm. and I was so scared because nobody else wanted to speak up and not because they wanted to hang me out to dry I know that but at the time I felt that way, um, it sucked. But I was the one with the big platform, so that's my job. But they were fearful for the right reasons. She's going to call animal control on me. She's going to have my animals take away. They know that we took back this dog. They're going to, you know. Oh, and, and she also knows where we all live. Right? Yes. She's yeah. to our she knows all the animal she control knows our, on she me. She kind of poisoned yeah. our animals. I remember a lot of fear. Around yeah, there was right. a we lot were, of fear surrounding that. For sure. sure. And, um, you know, and I think that was exacerbated because Jennifer had animal control called on her. And, and that is a big fear for people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had no support from the authorities. The police did not care. So you, back then we felt like our asses were just hanging out, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I go live and I, of course, had deleted a lot of stuff in my phone, but I was able to use my laptop to pull out old text conversations. And I just sat down almost not as eloquent and put together as your <laughs> timeline. And I went through and I was reading text messages off the screen, trying to put together this timeline of how does this person know all this information about April? Because it was like, it looked like, oh, Kimberly, Josh's mom is competing with April Clyde's mom and she's accusing her of bad stuff. Because back back when I was speaking out, people were challenging me. It wasn't like this time around where they're like, she had a lot of def- people defending a lot her. of people yeah. that because were there was hardcore no proof, Clyde really. Foster, yeah. there was you know yeah. Clyde people yeah, yeah there was no proof. there was no proof it, we we all made an effort at the same time to post on the same day do you guys remember that post oh, we yeah. all had right. the same exact post and it was like okay at this time at you know like when the clock hits this time everyone post and so we did like a blanket large you know, fire of a post, but that was everyone's platforms all at the same time. But not comfortably. That was no. met with a lot of resistance. That was. Wait, wait, people are you were guys scared. Talking about this time? No, no. this was in twenty nineteen. So, so Shira, crazy. here's yeah. the thing: is I was so reaching crazy. out to other big pages. I'm like, will you guys share this? And it, in the rescue community, it's kind of like, okay, if I share something like this, the, immediately that finger is going to get turned around. Right. Not yeah. because you're guilty of anything, but it's just the nature of the Because you're beast. another woman and you're competitive and you yeah, can't it's just handle weird. to yeah, see yeah. someone else be successful. Mm-hmm. You know, that usual, yeah. Yeah. That, you know. Yeah. So I, you know, so we do the post. Some people don't. They're afraid. And I, I really want people at home listening to this to understand we are not supported. And while it seems like having a big social media page makes you like, untouchable that is not the case you're you are risking whatever brand you've built Mm -hmm. if you have a rescue organization you're risking its reputation uh and in my case 
what soon followed after my big live was in the Maricopa County Assessor's Office or something, a, a, a friend of mine who is a paralegal who was doing some due diligence on my dad's uh, a state case that had gone sideways. She had run my information through whatever system y'all do in the back channels. And she's like, do you know that you're being sued? Actually, your husband is being sued by someone named April Addison. Well, we had never been served with the paperwork. She never served us. So I had no idea that she was drumming up this lawsuit, but it was filed. Mm -hmm. So Andrew reached out, got some advice and anyways, reached out to her lawyer and, you know, was very convincing and was like, well, we're going to get our lawyers ready and we're prepping for this. And and so he backed down. We're assuming it had something to do with finances or just a weak case because you just so people know, it's very difficult to actually pursue a defamation of character or slander lawsuit. Yes, it is very difficult and expensive, right, to litigate that. Mm -hmm. So April, that was her big defense back then. Oh, this is defamation of character. This is yes. a smear campaign. She just doesn't like me. She's a bully. I've always I've been bullied. I mean, it was very believable. And the people that follow her platform were following her hashtags. Compassion, inclusion, different is beautiful. And while all of that is true, it is very performative for April Addison. It was very performative. And I just want to interject yeah. because when she did give sound bites to our private detective, to that cop that went to their house, her house, um, even on lives that she did that I have, I screen recorded from back then of her at the park and people who were starting to catch on to her were asking the questions, asking her hard questions. She's like, they just want to bully me. They're just bullies. I yeah. remember that she would say stuff like that. They, yeah, they are just bullying me. Yeah. They're yeah. just, ups yeah. They're just doing this to bully me and yeah. make, yeah. Mm -hmm. None of it's true. Nobody else wants these dogs. It's, that was a common, a yeah. common thing. And she, she would go after the dogs though, that were the very difficult to place dogs. Your paralyzed cases, mm -hmm. your incontinent dogs, the dogs that sit in rescue for a very long time, she made sure that she was the perfect place for them. And so no one questioned that because everyone, I mean, I think we can all admit, you're, it's a huge relief when someone wants to adopt a dog who is incontinent and paralyzed. And difficult to place, absolutely. And, and no one else is applying. And then yeah. here comes this person who's like, oh, yes, I have experience. I totally love them. And they've been studying you and how you speak and how you interact with the world. And they bring it all out to you as your mirror. And you're like, oh, you're awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what she did. Yeah. So it was after that, I mean, to wrap up the Rex thing, after that, you know, Andrew and I kind of looked at each other and we're like, after everything we dealt with with my dad, we don't have the time and energy for this. It is what it is. At least people know about Clyde the Super Husky, you know, and that's that. And we went kind of just went on with our lives and we thought we didn't see see anything much from her. Mm -hmm. Her pages got quiet. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, we did it. We shut it down. And But it's important to note, we don't know <laughs> what we were shutting down. We just all felt as animal advocates, something's off, but there was nothing tangible like there is now. And maybe just for the record, the second yeah. truth page was another rescuer. Totally, dip, yeah. yeah. That, is, that was not me. Yeah. That so was, once okay. Jenny's got shut down, Somebody else has created had created the 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 truth page that is the truth page now that's been up ever yes, since then. Right. We we don't know who it is. Mm. Truthfully, everyone don't. thought it was me, right? Because that's what she was painting it as, right. and then she made retaliation truth pages, you know. But it was never it was <laughs> never me, fun. and it was never Andrew, and we don't really know who it is. We only know they've done a fantastic job. Yes, they've done they a collected a lot of. I think it's a collective group of people with really great skills mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. that have been able to investigate and finally find that proof. So once the proof started coming out, and there it was not just uh, you know hearsay. And there were records and photos and you first, know who it's like. First person accounts. Sorry. Do you know who it's like? What is that group that that anon anonymous? Isn't that what it is when they like shut the down really bad thing? stuff? Yeah, yeah anonymous. Yeah. The, the whoever's behind the soup behind the super husky page is the anonymous of the CD dog rescue world. <laughs> like I think they specifically pull, her. Yeah, yeah, specifically her. That's what it's like. I think yeah. it's a collective. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. And if it wasn't for, and that page stayed up, that page has stayed up because yep. that went up that's in 2019 and that's what went up after the Instagram page came down. 
And it's been up ever since. But then it went quiet because April went quiet. So we all thought everything was done. We hadn't seen her out. She wasn't organizing meets anymore. Paper Clouds was no longer making her shirts. Yeah. All of her avenues were all shut down. And that was part of the reason why she was suing you guys also because she said that that was the way she made money was off of her dog, Clyde. And since Kimberly and Andrew ruined her name with these rumors, now she could no longer make money and she didn't have a job and now they need to pay her for it. That's right. I remember that. That was the argument. She had cited that because of the truth page, when you search her name now, when you search April Addison... She could not find a job. No one would hire her. We we disa- untouchable. We disabled her ability to make a living, and that's why she was suing us. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's fair to say that probably at this point she changed her name. She now she did change her name. Changed it. Yeah. Yes, to she, the Taylor Sydney Sierra. I thought she changed it to April McLaughlin, and then no, that's her maiden name. Oh, okay. So she did change it from April completely. So we're in our Taylor era. We're in our oh yes. And Shira, Shira, Hunter, Shira. <laughs> Can I grab water really quick? To be continued in our multiple episode roundtable. Still to come, Shira, Becca, and Coco enter the chat, leading to the takedown of the House of Horrors and the rescue of Chandler 55.